Just because I love you, it don't mean I trust you. Everybody not to be trusted. Everybody around me thugging. Everybody around me drugging. Everybody around me hustling. Everybody know not to bring no new in around me to say I be bugging. Got racks in the go yard luggage. Just because I love you, it don't mean I trust you. Everybody not to be trusted. Welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, I'm just going to jump straight into this because we're having a really good conversation. I don't want to interrupt the flow. But yeah, you know, getting my nails done was a whole experience. Like, I never really. I've never done it like before, you know? Yeah. So like to me, it was just probably as feminine as I've ever been. It's just crazy, you know? Have you ever had uh, a pedicure? Uh, I have, I've had that, but not that's the nails. So the feet thing, that's not like, I don't know. To me, <laughs> that's not like too bad because I know they're gonna give you a massage and it's like being at a spa, you know? Yeah. But I don't like people touching my hands unless I want that, you know what I mean? Mm. Like I'm not like a very touchy person. Yeah. Like if Aaron were to come up, try to give me a hug, I think that he's a weirdo, yeah. but I hug him, you know, so he doesn't feel that way, but he definitely likes to hug me a lot for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I know I'm a fluffy dude, but damn. <laughs> I was thinking that in my head, but I was like, okay, maybe I say too much, so I'll keep that one in my head. But I was like, like genuinely? You're just a huggable person. Well, thank you. I yeah. mean, I don't. <laughs> it's so funny that God made me a huggable person, but I don't fucking really care to hug people. Now, yeah. you, I'll hug you all day. You know, that's, that's what's up. Like, we're homies and shit. Like, I got your back. You got that healing vibe, masculine, feminine. I feel it, you know? Yeah. And so when you come around, it's like that energy is there. And it really allows for me to just like, throw that barrier down and let people in. And it's a beautiful thing, really. And it's something that I had to learn how to do. You know what I mean? And it really comes from like a lot of trauma that I've had from back in the day, like yeah. hugging the wrong people. I always felt like if I let somebody in that far, I give them the ability to hurt me. So like I'd guard my shit and I'd be like, like my heart's like Iron Man, like and I start fucking like, you know, putting on the armor and shit. And, and I just like, I freeze for a second. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I, I completely understand. I actually, I think a lot of us have been traumatized and, yeah. and uh, I think some of us recognize it and some of us just think it's normal. Um, so like I, same here. So I totally understand. <laughs> With the polarity thing, like what exactly are they teaching you? Cause I know you <laughs> said you got three mentors. They're all men. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How is that? Well, it was kind of interesting to hire men to teach me how to be feminine. <laughs> and I, it was actually really triggering at first. So I hired them back in October and I almost fired them in November. Wow. And I, uh, cause I was like, forget this. <laughs> this is stupid. I don't like how you guys are acting like women need to be like the lesser sex and all that. And they were like, no, you're not understanding what we're doing here then. And so they talked to me and I was like, okay. And actually they're very gentle in explaining mm. and um, very masculine in their explaining. So it actually made me feel safe. And, uh, and I was like, okay. If this is what a masculine man is supposed to be like, because I used to think a masculine man was aggressive and domineering and controlling and, you know, and, and uh, you know, just telling everybody how it's going to be. And, and that is not at all masculine. That's just a, a toxic person. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, I was like, OK, I want to learn more about what this is about. So it triggered me for a long time. I still have my moments. I get super triggered over what they're teaching just because. It, I'll feel like I've got to be vulnerable and open myself up. Yeah. And, and that's being feminine is being vulnerable is, is telling how you feel and what you want, what you need and what your problems are. And that was something I didn't know. And I was like, that's being feminine. And they were like, so tell me how you're feeling right now. And I'm like, I know what my thoughts are right now, but I really don't know what my feelings are. And I would have my thoughts hide my feelings. Damn. And then I would have stories that I would tell and I would feel the feeling, but I wouldn't feel it. You know, like I wouldn't actually go into it and quit getting into my head. Yeah. And so what they've been teaching me is how to get out of my head, get more into my heart, get more expressive in how I'm feeling and, and telling a guy, like if I'm talking to a man or even a woman being more feminine and like, can I share my feelings right now? Like if I'm feeling uncomfortable instead of me, like I used to be bad about saying, um, you know, uh, I don't like that. Or, well, that's feminine too, saying I don't like that. Um, saying I, what I like, what I don't like, what I want, what I don't want, all that's feminine and talking about my feelings. And so like having, uh, doing all of that, but I would be sometimes a little more 
Well, I was more masculine. <laughs> I'd be like, this is how it's going to be. <laughs> and uh, Your brain tricks you into feeling those things. And that's what's crazy. Mm -hmm. So that whole get out of your head and then get in your heart thing. Yeah. You know, uh, my mentor, used, well, you know, Preston, he's like very in tune. So for me, meeting someone like that and hiring him as my mentor helped me out so much with seeing the bigger picture because yeah. I always thought business was just really like, you know, strategy, economics and uh, capitalism. That, mm -hmm. that is what I was raised that business was. I didn't know that there was like this whole emotional turmoil that it, is, it really makes up 80% of the journey. And fucking uh, one of the things that he taught me, he said, Q, your body is trying to do four things all of the time. And I said, what is it? You know, he said, number one, it's going to move past anything that's difficult. That's why people leave dumbbells on the floor. That's why people don't pick up trash when they walk by it. You just walk by it and you don't do anything. You're accustomed to this. You see somebody who's on the side getting wheeled into an ambulance. You look at it, but you do nothing. You keep driving and that's mm. human nature. And he said, the second thing is, is that we're built to mate. So no matter what it is that you do, you want to fuck like all the time, practically like you, you think of sex so often, it's just something that makes you a man. And then the third thing is no matter what happens, you have to eat. If you don't eat, you die. And then the fourth one is no matter what happens, you have to sleep. And if you don't sleep, you'll die. So all four of these things, these are all literal psychological barriers that trigger specific hormones that activate neurons that release dopamine in certain areas of your brain that keep you like in a paradigm, you know? And so learning how to break through those paradigms and create new ones is so hard. But the way he told me that you start is by getting out of your head because mm -hmm. your mind will lie to you and tell you all of these things and get into your heart. Once you do that, you're free to recreate your paradigm and you can literally shift your whole conscious mind into a different reality so that you see the things that you want to see, not yeah. the thing that not the things that people are showing you. Yeah. And, and it was a beautiful thing for him to teach me. That was like mind boggling. But I got it down after a while. And still to this day, I struggle with depression and anxiety. And mm -hmm. I struggle with when things get hard and when times get tough or I'm in the middle of like a crucial, de crucial decision, you know, but I, I'm also very good at processing my emotions now, like rather than taking it out and lashing it out on other people, I can now focus inward internally. I don't have to worry about so much of like talking them out or anything like that. Like I mm -hmm. can go to the gym, I can go and run, I can go and just put myself in a room by myself so I don't say or do anything that I feel might hurt someone else, you know? Yeah. They actually told me not to talk about the story. You just feel the feelings. So it's not something that you actually have to express or tell somebody about. Like, yeah. Uh, now, of course, as a woman, I can be like, I'm upset or whatever. But do you want to know something that can reset your energy really quickly? What? Becoming present. Present. Some people have told me, oh, I've got a, I've got a lot more work to do. I'm like, no, you don't. Look at me. Just look at me. Okay, I'm here. Pay attention to what's going around you. Feel your body. Feel your breath. How does it feel? Great. Like a vacation. It's peace. Yep. This vibration that you're at right now, you can accomplish whatever you want to. And how long did it take you to get there? Five seconds. We all have that. There's no work to do in that sense. There's healing and feeling to heal it, but I think we overcomplicate how easy it is for us to get to a higher vibration. For sure. I think also having other people that are vibrating at a higher level than you around you is key to continuously growing in your own vibration because you just being here lights my whole fucking day up. Like really, <laughs> you know, and I haven't seen you in a long time. So it's really cool. I feel like uh, you got a lot going on. I have a lot going on too, but whenever we meet, it's always like, I don't know, this giant combustion of like energy where we're just like throwing out game really back and mm -hmm. forth. And then we mastermind. I learned so much from you. You know, whenever I refer to you, I referred to you in front of Amanda over here a second ago that like you're one of my mentors in a way, you know, Aww. like you've taught me so much about my my feelings and my emotions. And I never even known that you were in tune with those things because I've always known you as just business Mitzi. But this new hippie Mitzi, 
I fucks with it. Hi- Hippie Mitzi was before Business Mitzi. So. I didn't know. Yeah. I had no clue. <laughs> yeah. Yo, business is crazy. Like, that's psychology. That's a different mm-hmm. level, too, you know? And as much as I appreciate business, I appreciate more the internal work that you and I do when we're on this podcast together and people get a chance to hear us from our heart, not just from our expertise and what we feel that someone can do to make more money in real estate. Because making money is actually pretty fucking easy. Mm-hmm. What's not easy, though, is going through depression and anxiety and learning how to battle those demons or even how to process yeah. those emotions so it doesn't crash. Yeah, because because once you, there's layers, but once you start feeling into those emotions, quit telling the story, just fill into the emotions. And, and when you tell the story again, you're gonna notice the emotions just aren't the same. You'll even notice that there is not a need to keep telling the story either because there's no reason to keep bringing it up. That emotion is getting the attention it needed. Mm. So like when you're triggered or when you're trying to, you want to tell a story, um, about something that's bad happened to you that actually will bring you back into a lower vibration while you're telling the story. That's something I had to learn. I was like, oh my God, I've said so many bad stories <laughs> over and over. <laughs> like I was like, oh, I'm a victim. Um, but the, uh, it, the more you heal and the more you go through the layers of healing, yeah. like you'll notice that the anxiety starts going away. The sleepless nights start going away. Even the weight starts coming off. This is something that our side effects that some of my students or all of my students are experiencing. They're saying, I'm sleeping like a baby now. I haven't slept in five years um, without uh, having to sit up because of my acid reflux. Acid reflux is gone. Like my food allergies are gone. And they haven't done anything besides processing their emotions. And that's how much our emotions get stored in the body and uh, make us like it brings up illness. It brings up, you know, anxiety, depression, all of that because of things that have happened to us that have caused chemical imbalances. So like depression causes is a chemical imbalance and that runs in my family. So I suffered from depression for a long time myself, too. And and sometimes I'll even notice myself starting to go back into it. But now I know how to stop it. So I have to make sure that my diet's good. Like I'm not taking, I'm not eating too much sugar, not drinking, not doing anything. Cause these false highs that we do too, yeah. cause chemical imbalances in our brain, it's true. which will set off depression. And so like, if you're not eating right and you're not exercising, you're not taking care of yourself, don't be surprised if you're falling into depression. And I'm not saying that you don't do that cause you do, yeah, do, yeah. That, do, do that now. But sometimes what we'll do is we'll start feeling bad and we won't know why cause depression will just come on. It's not like something has to set it off. Sometimes it just comes on. Yep. And um, <clears throat> what I do is when I notice that, I get a journal out and I just start brain dumping. How am I feeling? Why am I feeling this way? What's going on? And I may not even know why, but the more I journal, I do start digging into it. And I'm like, why am I feeling? What am I feeling? I love it. It's like processing. Yeah. And getting that brain dump out. Get out of your head. Mm-hmm. Cause we get cluttered up and then we think we think we're not, but yeah, just brain dump. And then I'll be like, what's going to bring me some joy. And when you're in depression, almost nothing brings you joy. So <laughs> yeah, it's like, so it's like, okay, what can I do? And, um, so I'll do self care, you know, I'll go get a massage. Like who doesn't enjoy a massage? I just recently uh, got my lashes done. It was pretty cool. You got your eyelashes done? Yes. Did you just say that? <laughs> I'm saying that shit on a podcast. <laughs> Holy crap. No, That's yeah, okay. I did. Are your eyelashes done no, right they're, now? No, they're not. These are okay. my natural eyelashes. Okay. Thank you, though, that for, for, you know, <laughs> I heard these are my feminine yeah. features. So, yeah, I'll rock it. I'll rock it. But, no, yeah, I got my eyelashes done. I wore it for about two days and I had that shit taken off because <laughs> I don't know how the fuck you chicks can walk around with fucking, I don't know, butterflies on your face. That's what it felt like. Oh yeah. But you know, it was really cool to experience it. I've been experiencing things lately that I've, I've not been open to, you know, and, mm-hmm. and I feel like it's given me so much more understanding of who I am, you know, because uh, I, I feel like I've now been like, how can I say this? I feel like I'm in a spotlight all the time. Like people are wanting to know and see my next move. And, you know, I'm, I'm like a social media guy. So like a lot of people know me. I can't fucking mm-hmm. even go like literally I went to go donate, like not donate blood, but like uh, to, to uh, get my blood work done and my labs. Uh-huh. So like, like every time I go, somebody knows me there. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's just a, a crazy thing. I fucking went to I could probably go to a goddamn funeral and somebody would know me there. And, you know, yeah. so like. Because of that, I've, I've always felt like I had to hold myself to a specific standard, you know, like, and I had to put on this persona like that I'm like driven and hard all of the time, mm-hmm. you know? And so like lately I've just been kind of like 
falling back on that and expressing more my emotions and what I feel. And yesterday, so like, uh, you know, Aaron and I, we have our education company together. Now mm -hmm. I'm taking all these calls and I'm meeting all of these people who have literally, they love Aaron or mm -hmm. they, they love me or they love both of us. Like they've been following us for so long. They're like blown away that I'm on the phone with them, right? And this guy just gave me so much confirmation. He's like, Hugh, I know that you're like a real estate dude. And I know that you're like super knowledgeable in business, but like, man, you inspire me so much to just stay on the grind in the gym and to not drink alcohol and to do all of these other things. And dude, like I needed that call like more than anything, but you're right. Like, you know, you, you get to this point where it's like everybody's looking and now you just don't give a fuck who's watching and you step yeah. in your own light and it's no longer a spotlight. It's like you radiate that light now. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. But that thing that you were talking about, about brain dumping, I learned this from Carlos Reyes in Phoenix. And I may have mm -hmm. talked about it on a podcast with you and I before, yeah. but he calls it feel, deal, heal. Yeah. I love that so much. Cause he's like, and you're going through something, right? Number one, you have to feel it and let it flow. If you try to yeah. hold it in, hold yourself from crying, hold yourself from being depressed, like fucking feel it, bro. Yeah. Let that shit flow through. And a couple of buckets later, right? Now we're going to deal with it. Why did I feel this way? What triggered this emotion? How can I process this? What can I learn from this? What can I gain from this? Mm -hmm. Now I'm asking myself the correct question so I can legitimately move on with my life. And now at this point, you heal from it. Mm -hmm. You throw it, you grab it, crumble it up throw it behind you and you keep moving forward because yeah. now you healed from it because you yeah. just processed it. So feel, deal, heal. I'll never forget that. And Carlos Reyes, man, if you're listening to this, I love you, dude. Like really, He's um, great. this He's guy's great. done so much for me. He put me on a stage in front of like six, 700 people in 2019. It changed my life. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know this, but I was on shrooms when I did that fucking, that, that <laughs> presentation. I got shrooms the day before from my boy, Elijah. And uh, yeah, man, I popped three of them hoes and I was fucked up my phone died and they called me to the hotel room say hey q we had a speaker cancel you have to fill in the 1035 spot it's a full house on saturday man that was scary <laughs> that was scary yo yeah. but i went up there and I, I i think that was the like to this day i can't remember a damn thing i talked about but i remember showing my family i remember showing anime shit up there and like i i threw my presentation that, like together at five or six in the morning Mm -hmm. And I just remember I couldn't stop laughing. The shrooms got me so fucked up and I hadn't done shrooms in like a decade, you know, yeah. but that was the moment that like changed my life, man. But I, I feel like I manifested that moment. I feel like it came to me at the perfect time. And even if I was on psychedelics or whatever you, what would you call it? Shrooms? What, what is that? Is that psychedelics. That's a psychedelic. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, fucking even if I was on psychedelics that I could still see the truth in what it was that I was doing for myself, you know, because mm -hmm. that was an, uh, that was a game changing moment for me. That yeah. was the thing that changed everything. But having like gone from that moment to making a lot of money in business, then getting through COVID, then going through depression, then gaining all that weight, then losing all that weight. Now I feel like I'm at a point where I'm operating at my highest and it feels fucking goddamn great, dude. Like oh, that's awesome. everything's just so much more clear now. I'm focused, you know, mm -hmm. but it does take time to get there. And people talk about business and these emotions and these feelings and the feminine and the masculine. And it's like, you really have to experience it to understand it. Yeah, and I think a lot of people don't even really understand what all that is anyways. I, so I, then they, when they see feminine masculine, they think separation. What do yeah. you think? Oh, no, not at all, because you have feminine masculine inside of you. And I think that needs to be married in a way for you to be your whole self and be your best self, because mm. we should be able to pull our feminine or masculine side when it's needed. Um, and so, like... I do need to be more masculine in my businesses. Now I try to still fill in some femininity in there as well. Um, but I, I've got to teach. Teaching is masculine. Um, you know, running a business is masculine. I got a question, Mitzi, and, and I think that this is a valuable one because I struggle with this. Like most of the time when I'm in a place where I know that it's like, a negative person can't just leave and I have to sit here while this person is just negative the entire time. I'm saying this because I respect the person that I'm talking about and it's more like family, mm -hmm. right? So like I go to a place and then there's nothing but negativity that's there. And mm -hmm. that's all they do is just talk crap about people or they gossip and drama and whatnot. How do you block that out when you can't leave? Why can't you leave? Well, uh, it's rude, <laughs> I think. So I don't know. I'm more or less wondering how you deal with it if it's something that's incapable of leaving you. 
So you can change the subject. What I'll do is like, so do you all have any plans this weekend? Mm. You know, like you drive. I like it. Yeah. And that's masculine too. leading the conversation and asking the questions like that. That's actually masculine. Damn. So I just showed my masculinity to you. Yeah. Like if you just were like, you know, well, you asking me how to do it and asking me to lead, you are actually being more feminine just now. Ah. And I was being more masculine. Oh, but um, and me telling you how to. This how is to Mitzi's do. podcast now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is the Mitzi show. <laughs> yeah. said, Look at me. I'm the captain now. <laughs> yeah. Let's start rowing. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> so, yeah, you just like redirect the conversation. And that's what I do now. And then, like, if I'm trying to get out of the conversation, too, is I'll just be like, oh, yeah, I, you know, so uh, what, what's going on with that? And I'll hear them say that and be like, oh, you know, that's so great. It's going like that. Well, it's so good to see you. I'll, I'll see you later. And then you leave, you know, and uh, you just keep it on a positive note. But it's just redirecting it into something else, kind of distracting them. It's like art of distraction. Yeah. And I, it also reminds me of, like, being a parent. Like, I think the better parent you are, the more you are great at the art of distraction. <laughs> you know, I, that's so crazy because mm -hmm. I do that too. I redirect mm -hmm. conversations, but I do it unconsciously. And honestly, mm -hmm. it helps tremendously with the vibe of a room, especially if I can tell that the conversation is going in a direction that I know that it's just not a good outcome. Like it's going to lead to like an argument or something, you know? Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and I think that's a gift, to be honest, to be able to even pick those things up. But you're just really in tune too, Mitzi. You know, for the people that are listening right now, how would you suggest for somebody who's never been in tune with their energies before that doesn't know anything about their masculine or feminine, any of those things, how would they learn this stuff? You have to start paying attention to yourself and start getting to know yourself. So just start paying attention to your emotions and uh, quit talking so much. Just mm. just feel into how you're feeling in certain situations and then journal in the morning and at night or at least once a day journal about what you're thinking, what you're feeling, how it's going and get to know yourself and how you think and what you feel because how you think and what you feel is going to create your life. So like you uh, getting to know your own thoughts and why you think them, like, why do I think this? Cause a lot of us think our beliefs are truth. Our beliefs are only truth to us because we reiterate them and make them our truth. So the moment you accept a belief, that becomes your truth. So it's like important to understand, what are my beliefs? What's my belief about relationships? What's my belief about money? What's my belief about career? What's my belief about business? What's my belief about me? You know, what's my belief about my family? What's my belief about men? What's my belief about women? Write these things down and say, and then another one is now start, are there problems in any of these areas because of that belief? Mm. And if there's a problem, that means that belief isn't true. Truth feels good. Truth is in the ultimate truth, which is a paradox all the time, um, which that was <laughs> may not be a truth because I just made it sound like that. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, um, truth is paradox. Yeah. So, but if you. Um, what so, a great word, paradox. Yeah. It's dope. To name your book, Mitzi and the Paradox Mind, or some <laughs> shit like that. Keep going. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all okay. good. Um, so, like, I, that's what, how I started getting to know myself. And then when something started triggering me, instead of me looking at the other person, like, ugh, you know, like, it's their fault that I'm getting upset. Like, I'd be like, what am I thinking right now that's upsetting me? How am I thinking about what they're saying or what they're doing? that is upsetting me. And what is this feeling that I'm feeling? Can I feel it? And getting to know yourself like that is so important. And um, there's a map of consciousness that I talk about on the emotional scale, but I think tapping into your emotions saying, how am I feeling right now? Even as a man, you know, cause we all have, we're emotional beings. Yeah. And um, now I don't think a man should emotionally dump on a woman, but uh, <clears throat> she won't feel like you're stable. Um, but I do think that that's so powerful because I refrain from doing exactly that. Yeah, I, I don't like to dump my problems on somebody until I get I've gotten to know them. And then I get an idea of what they can handle because there's too much shit in my mind, you know. And so, like, I don't want to dump until I've known. So, like, once I can like I can tell how strong you are mentally to carry that load. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like for you, like I've dumped crazy shit onto you. Like 
you've handled it very well, held it straight above your shoulders, you know, but I've gotten a chance to know you. Mm-hmm. In the first five years of our relationship, when I say relationship, I'm not like saying like we're married, <laughs> like that, but I'm saying like of us being like friends, because how long has it been? I met you in 2015. No, I, I th- it was 2016. 2016? When I got into this business. Okay, then it was yeah. 2016. So what yeah. the fuck is that? Seven years? Yeah. I yeah. barely started opening up to you. Like mm-hmm. barely within the last what? Year? Yeah. I'd say like a year. Yeah. I don't do that to nobody. Yeah. You know, but we've had so much talks. I get an idea of what your intellect is like. And then it makes me feel more comfortable. But I, I believe that too. And I think that that's a very controversial thing because a lot of people think that you shouldn't hold in your emotions. And I'm not saying that I hold them in, I just give them selectively. That's yeah. the difference. Like, it's not like I'm holding the shit in. I just give it selectively to someone. That's it. Well, because it takes vulnerability to give, uh, to, to express your emotions mm, and not true. everybody deserves your vulnerability. So. God damn, that was a bar. Holy crap. <laughs> Sorry. Not everybody deserves your vulnerability. Mm-mm. That just got me so hype. Holy fuck. Well, I am also wired. Now my coach is going to be like, yes, they do. <laughs> So I don't agree with every single thing. Uh, well, I mean, you've I'm had a taught. lot of coaches, though. And yeah. I think what's cool about having multiple mentors is you get to pick and choose what you like from each one, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I agree with a lot of stuff that Preston says, but mm-hmm. I ain't walking on coals with my bare feet, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> yes. what I'm saying? I agree yes. with a lot of what, you know, uh, Tanya says, but I also still make certain decisions on my own, you know? And I'm not saying that I don't mm-hmm. like what any of these mentors or coaches have taught oh, me. Yeah. I'm saying that I pick and choose what I feel is valuable that fits me the best because I'm a mm-hmm. fucking puzzle piece. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like, I will pick things that I feel fit in this paradigm of who I am. Yeah, it should resonate with you. Yeah. And I feel like vulnerability is kind of like a dog rolling over with its belly up and you know, you want to make sure somebody's not going to attack. Sometimes your vulnerability can be ammo for some people. Yep. That is true. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely like, uh, you just got to pick and choose who you decide to share yourself with like that, you know? And, and it's definitely like a hard thing to do in my opinion, you know? I actually don't share a a lot of stuff. I'm pretty vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, I don't share, (laughs) I don't share a lot of stuff and people are like, why don't you share this stuff? Why don't you share that stuff? Like, I mean, I did a flip made 101,000. Nobody even knows about it. Didn't even, I mean, I just now said it. Like I closed on it um, last month. Way to fucking go. It was a single wide on a half an acre too. Uh, So it's like, uh, and then I'm doing another one. I should make over a hundred thousand on that one. It's just a double wide on an acre. And it, but I'm, I'm not telling people that because like money wise, I feel like when people found out I did that big deal, Mm -hmm. um, I had people in my DMs saying I need money. I didn't even know who they were. They didn't even say, hi, how are you? It was almost like everybody felt entitled to what I had. And it was a lot of men coming to me saying, I need money. You got money, bitch. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's the way to get money from me. You know, like, and- Who the fuck? Oh, it was ridiculous, ridiculous. Well, it was, a, it was interesting, just the crowds that was coming in, feeling entitled to my money. And, um, and I was like, wow, this is really interesting. And then after that, I was kind of scared off of telling people about some of the deals I do because I don't want people just coming at me because of money. And um, because I want you to like me for me. And also I was intimidating a lot of men. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I don't want to be, you know, intimidating men. But I guess it's a good thing to intimidate some because if I'm inti- intimidating a man, he's probably emasculated anyways. But uh, I. That's crazy <clears throat> how that works though, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, man, I feel like that's just, that that's toxic, you what? know? Like the, if for a man to be intimidated by a woman like that, you know? That's <laughs> so gross And And me. like, uh, and so like they, they, they get angry and then they get negative about it or they try to oh, they get real like, abusive. Yeah. They'll that, try to bring I'm me saying. down. You yeah. know, and then they'll try to say like, oh, well, you're a woman and I'm a man. And it's like, well, dude. oh, you know how many men have, have told me, oh, you're going to just be a single old lady, a cat lady, because you want to run a business. And I'm like, no, I just would never date you. Who the fuck said that shit? Oh, I get it all the time. I get it all the time. Oh, and, and I get men always like mansplaining things to me all the time in my Man step. Mansplaining. Oh, they'll explain to me something I taught them. Wow. And I'm just like, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so like, but I'm just like, you know what? If this is what makes them feel important, whatever. 
you know, and yeah. I'll just exit the conversation as soon as I can. But, you know, I think that when men are intimidated by men and women, it's just a man who doesn't want to live up to his potential. Yeah. And because like if you're intimidated by somebody else, that that's that part of you that knows that you're capable of more. And it's screaming out to you. And instead you're projecting that negative feeling onto me. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, like, especially when a man's like, oh, you deserve better. Basically, he's breaking up with a girl if he's saying that. Like, <laughs> he doesn't think that. He's just saying, you know, like, I just don't want you anymore. <laughs> I want to keep my options open. But um, Holy fuck. Because, <laughs> well, for real, if a man yeah. wants a woman, he will step up to the, the plate for her. He will. He, if he wanted to, he would. Yep. And if a man is saying, I'm not good enough for you, he's basically breaking up with you, honey. You know, and because he doesn't want to step up the plate for you. Yeah. That's what he's saying. And so, like, uh, people can step up. People can do better. For somebody to say, I'm pretty much here. You know, like, that's a cop out. Yeah. So I think, I think everybody's capable of so much more than what they're doing. Even me. You know, we all, I think we play smaller because it's uncomfortable to actually have our light shining out. And oh, dude, today I picked up a 120 pound dumbbell in both hands and I fucking chest pressed that shit and I got it wow. on camera. That's I'm awesome. strong. But like, I mm -hmm. do you think I went into that thinking that I couldn't do it? Yeah. No, I knew it in my mind that it was true that I could do this, you know? So like when I picked up that weight and then I loaded it into my chest and I was able to like push it up. I mean, you know, there's just a different version of me that existed in that moment. But like we all have that. Right. And I think that happens when you take 100 percent responsibility for the outcome of your life. And by doing that, you can have full control of whatever it is that you want to do. If you want to get married with somebody, then mm -hmm. that's your responsibility. You can make that your reality. If you want to fucking have kids with somebody, then you can make that a reality. You can take control of your life. And, yeah. and people don't know that, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and it, all it takes is a decision. So like, if you want to stay with someone fucking and, and be miserable, bro, that's also your responsibility. Like, yeah. and, and like, I don't know, I, I was having a conversation this morning about some shit like this. Right. And, uh, you know, I was just saying like anything that happens with where I'm at in my relationship is my fault, you know, and, uh, got some advice from friends and they're like, Hugh, it's not your fault. And I say, nah, it is. I don't care. Like hundred percent accountability. You, if a woman is angry with you, you made her that way. If a woman is uh, suspicious of you, you've made her that way. You've given her reason to be like that. If she's no longer the light in your life anymore, it's because you have brought her darkness. And mm -hmm. so as a man, mm -hmm. right, you accept mm -hmm. responsibility for the things that you've done that have caused this woman to become who she is. And mm -hmm. then you do better on the next one, you know, because some people are too far gone. A woman is a reflection of her man. Yeah, A woman is fire. always a reflection of her man. Damn. And men lead. So if a man is complaining about a woman, he's telling you his lack of leadership and problem solving skills. Yep. He's not telling you anything about her. And so like women, when they first get with a man and they have accepted you as their man, it's because they trusted you. It's because they cared and they opened themselves up for you. And then however you treat her along the way, that's how you're going to shape her. Mm. So like, the, if you want to see a great leader, look at the woman he's with. Is she smiling? Is she happy? Is she Damn. being well taken care of? Damn. That's a good leader. Man. We're going to land the plane on this, man. That was fucking fire. I got to <laughs> make sure y'all save this fucking podcast. Yo, if y'all get value from this podcast, make sure you follow Mitzi. She's a really good friend of mine. We've been doing this for a while now. And uh, it's her first time back. It's been probably well over a month now since the last time we've done a podcast for the people that are listening that are brand new where can they find you mitzydiane.com my website is being made but uh you can also check out facebook and instagram mitzy diane m-i-t-z-i-d-y-a-n-e you guys thank y'all for tuning in i'll catch y'all in the next one <laughs>